Hey everyone, welcome back to Tech Cloud Solution, your one-stop channel for all things cloud certification. Today, we're diving into something every Azure admin needs to know, the AZ-104 Renewal Exam for 2025. If your certification is expiring soon, don't worry, I'll show you exactly how the renewal process works, walk you through Microsoft's official email, and share real renewal exam questions with answers to help you pass in one go. First, let's look at the email you'll receive from Microsoft when it's time to renew your AZ-104 certification. You'll get a subject line like, it's time to renew your Microsoft certification. Inside, you'll see a Renew Now button. Click it to begin. This takes you to the Microsoft Learn Renewal page. Here's where you'll log in with your Microsoft account linked to your certification. On the Renewal dashboard, you'll see the AZ-104 Renewal exam listed. The best part? It's free and open book but don't take it lightly. Duration and pass criteria. Duration, 45 minutes. Number of questions, 25 to 30. Format, multiple choice. Passing score, 70%. Unlimited attempts until the expiration date. You can take the exam multiple times before your cert expires, but aim to pass it on the first try. And that's what we'll help you do next. Let's look at some real AZ-104 renewal style questions with clear explanations. These are based on recent patterns and Microsoft Learn topics. Question 1. You have an Azure subscription that includes a virtual network named VNet1. You plan to create a web app named WebApp1 and deploy it to VNet1. You need to prepare the environment for the planned web app. The solution must minimize costs. Which app service plan size should you use? Select only one answer. A. Dev test B1. B. Dev test F1. C. Isolated I1v2. D. Production P1v2E. Production P3v3. To deploy an Azure Web App to a virtual network VNet using VNet integration, you must use an app service plan that supports this capability. Let's break down the options and find the minimum cost app service plan that meets the requirement. Key requirement. Deploy a Web App to VNet1 requires VNet integration feature. Important info. VNet integration is not supported in the free F1 and shared D1 tiers. Basic B1 and standard or higher tiers support VNet integration, but with limitations. Only the premium, P1v2 and above, and isolated I1v2 tiers support deployment into the VNet using private endpoint regional VNet integration, which is required for accessing resources inside a VNet securely, e.g. private databases. Isolated I1v2 is meant for hosting apps in a dedicated environment and is very expensive. P1v2 supports VNet integration and is much cheaper than isolated. Correct answer. Production P1v2, why not the others? F1 free, no VNet integration. B1 basic, supports limited VNet integration for outbound traffic only, not full integration. I1v2 isolated, supports VNet integration, but too costly and the question asks to minimize costs. P3v3, supports it, but more expensive than P1v2. Question 2. You plan to deploy the following Azure web apps. Web app 1, that uses the .NET 8 runtime stack. Web App 2 that uses the ASP.NET v4.8 runtime stack. Web App 3 that uses the Java 21 runtime stack. Web App 4 that uses the PHP 8.3 runtime stack. You need to create the app service plans for the web apps. What is the minimum number of app service plans that should be created? Select only one answer. A, B, 2, C, 3, 4. To answer this question, you need to understand how Azure app service plans work with different runtime stacks. Key concept. Multiple web apps can share the same app service plan if they are in the same region. They use the same OS platform, Windows or Linux. Different runtime stacks may require different OS platforms, Windows or Linux. Let's examine each web app. 1. Web app 1. .NET 8 or runs on Linux or Windows. Oh, modern .NET versions like .NET 8 typically run on Linux and app service. 2. Web App 2. ASP.NET v4.8. O only supported on Windows. O classic ASP.NET framework is Windows only. 3. Web App 3. Java 21. O runs on Linux. O Java apps typically run best on Linux. 4. Web App 4. PHP 8.3. O runs on Linux. O PHP is supported on Linux. Analysis. Web App 2 must be on Windows. Web App 1. Web App 3. Web App 4 can run on Linux. So, Group 1. Linux. Web App 1. Web App 3. Web App 4. One App Service Plan Linux, Group 2 Windows, Web App 2, One App Service Plan Windows. Correct answer 2. You need two App Service Plans, one Linux based for Web 1, Web App 3, Web App 4, 
one Windows-based for WebApp 2. Question 3. You have Azure Web App named WebApp 1. You need to integrate GitHub as a source code repository for WebApp 1. What should you use? Select only one answer. A. Deployment Center. B. Deployment Slots. C. Extensions. D. Service Connector. Explanation. To integrate GitHub as a source code repository for your Azure Web App, Web App 1, you should use Deployment Center. This is the built-in tool in Azure App Service that allows you to set up CI-CD from source control systems like OGithub, OAzure Repos, OBitBucket, OLocalGit. It lets you automatically deploy your app whenever code is pushed to your GitHub repo. Why not the others? Deployment slots, O used for staging and production environments, not for connecting to GitHub. Extensions, O used to add features or tools, e.g. site extensions, not for GitHub integration. Service connector, O used to connect your app to services like databases, not for source control integration. Final answer, Deployment Center for question 4. You have an Azure web service named Contoso 2025 that runs in the standard app service plan. Contoso 2025 has five deployment slots in use. A user named User1 has the contributor role for Contoso 2025. You need to ensure that User1 can create additional deployment slots to Contoso 2025. What should you do? Select only one answer. A. Assign User1 the owner role for Contoso 2025. B. Assign User1 the website contributor role for Contoso 2025. C. Scale out the Contoso 2025 app service plan. D. Scale up the Contoso 2025 app service plan. Correct answer. Scale up the Contoso 2025 app service plan. Explanation. The number of deployment slots you can create depends on the pricing tier of your app service plan. For the standard tier, maximum of five deployment slots. To create more than five slots, you must scale up to a higher pricing tier, such as Premium V2 or Premium V3, which support more deployment slots, up to 20. Why not the others? Assign user one the owner role. Oh, this grants full access, but doesn't change the slot limit of the current plan. Assign user one the website contributor role. Oh, same as above, role changes don't increase slot capacity. Scale out the app service plan. Oh, scaling out increases instance count. Horizontal scaling, not the number of deployment slots. Final answer, scale up the Contoso 2025 app service plan. Question 5. You have Azure subscription that includes virtual network named VNet1 in West US region. You plan to deploy following container instances. Instance 1, running Windows container image in West US region. Instance 2, running Linux container image in West US region. Instance 3, running Windows container image in East US region. Which container instances can be deployed to VNet1? Select only one answer. A. Instance 1 and Instance 2 only. B. Instance 1 and Instance 3 only. C. Instance 1, Instance 2, and Instance 3. D. Instance 1 only. E. Instance 2 only. Correct answer, Instance 1 and Instance 2 only. Explanation. To deploy Azure Container Instances, ACI, into a virtual network, VNet, there are two main restrictions you must consider. 1. Region Restriction A container instance must be in the same region as the virtual network. VNet1 is in West US, so only container instances in West US can be deployed to it. Instance 1 and Instance 2 are in West US. Instance 3 is in East US, cannot be deployed to VNet1. 2. OS Support for VNet Integration Linux containers, supported in VNets. Windows containers, supported, as of recent Azure updates. So both Linux and Windows containers can be deployed to VNets in the same region. Conclusion. Instance 1, Windows container in West US, OK. Instance 2, Linux container in West US, OK. Instance 3, Windows container in East US, not OK. Final answer, Instance 1 and Instance 2 only. Question 6. You have an Azure Container Registry that stores an image named Image1 and a Windows Server 2025 Azure Virtual Machine named VM1. You need to ensure that you can run Image1 in VM1. What should you install in VM1? Select only one answer. A. Azure Portal. B. Docker. C. Hyper-V Role. D. .NET Framework. 4.8. Correct answer. Docker Image1. Explanation. To run a container image, Image1, from an Azure Container Registry, ACR, on a Windows Server 2025 virtual machine, VM1, you need to have a container runtime environment installed. What does that mean? 
Docker is the container runtime that allows you to pull, run, and manage containers. It supports Windows and Linux containers and can interact with Azure Container Registry, ACR, to pull images. Why not the others? Azure Portal. Oh, this is a web-based interface, not something you install on a VM. Hyper-V Role. Oh, Hyper-V is used for virtualization, not for running Docker containers directly. .NET Framework 4.8. Oh, this may be required by certain apps, but not for running container images in general. Final answer. Docker... Question 7. You have Azure subscription that includes virtual network with following subnets. Subnet 1, which has connected virtual machine. Subnet 2, which has connected app service web app. Subnet 3, which has deployed container instance. You plan to deploy container instance named container 1. To which subnets can you deploy container 1? Select only one answer. A. Subnet 1 and Subnet 3 only. B. Subnet 1, Subnet 2, and Subnet 3 C. Subnet 2 and Subnet 3 only. D. Subnet 3 only. Correct answer. Subnet 3 only. Explanation. Azure Container Instances, ACI, can be deployed to a subnet in a virtual network, but there are important restrictions. Key rules for ACI subnet deployment. Each subnet in a VNet can contain only one type of resource deployment for certain services like ACI. If a subnet already has an app service environment, container instance, or other special resource type, it cannot host another type. ACI can only be deployed into subnets specifically available for container instances, i.e. must not already be used by incompatible services. In this case, subnet 1 has a virtual machine, not ideal for ACI, may cause conflicts. Subnet 2 already contains app service, not compatible. Subnet 3 already has a container instance, valid for more ACI deployments if capacity permits. Final answer, subnet 3 only. Question 8. You have an Azure storage account named Storage1. You need to ensure that a user named User1 can access Storage1 only from January 1st to January 31st, 2026. What should you do? Select only one answer. A. Create a conditional access policy for User1. B. Provide User1 with a shared access signature. C. Provide User1 with a Storage1 access key D. Use a condition when assigning user 1 an RBAC role on storage 1. Correct answer. Provide user 1 with a shared access signature. SAS. To restrict access to an Azure storage account for a specific time period, e.g. January 1 to 31, 2026, the best option is to use a shared access signature. SAS. A SAS token grants limited access to storage resources. You can specify start and expiry dates times, e.g. valid only in January 2026. You can also control permissions, read, write, etc., and restrict access by IP or protocol. Why not the others? Conditional access policy. O targets Azure AD sign-in conditions, e.g. MFA, device compliance, but cannot set a date range for storage access. Access key. O grants full access, but you cannot limit by date time or restrict by user. RBAC with condition. O oh, Azure RBAC C conditions are limited and do not currently support date-based access windows directly. Final answer. Provide user 1 with a shared access signature, SA. Question 9. You have an Azure subscription that contains the following storage accounts. Storage 1, configured as storage v2 kind. Storage 2, configured as blob storage kind. Storage 3, configured as file storage kind. Which storage account or storage accounts can you use lifecycle management? Select only one answer. A. Storage 1 and Storage 2 only. B. Storage 1 and Storage 3 only. C. Storage 1 only. D. Storage 1, Storage 2, and Storage 3. E. Storage 2 and Storage 3 only. Correct answer. Storage 1 and Storage 2 only. Azure Storage Lifecycle Management helps you automatically move blobs between access tiers, hot, cool, archive, or delete them based on rules. Supported account types. Lifecycle management is only supported for storage v2, general purpose v2, blob storage. These account types support blob data and lifecycle rules for blob containers. Unsupported. File storage. Lifecycle management is not supported for Azure files. Final answer, storage 1 and storage 2 only. Question 10. You have an Azure subscription. You plan to create a storage account that contains the following settings. Name, storage 1. Performance standard, redundancy, zone redundant storage, ZRS. What is the minimum number of copies of storage one data stored in Azure? Select only one answer. A, two, 
B3. C. 6D9. Correct answer. You are planning to create a standard performance storage account with Zone Redundant Storage, ZRS. What is ZRS? ZRS equals Zone Redundant Storage. It replicates your data across three availability zones in the same Azure region. Each availability zone is an independent physical location with its own power, cooling, and networking. How many copies does ZRS store? ZRS stores three copies of your data, one in each of the three availability zones. This provides high durability and availability, even if a single zone fails. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your fellow Azure learners. And hey, for more mock tests, practice PDFs, and detailed explanations, head over to TechCloud Solution, your trusted partner in cloud success. See you in the next video, and good luck renewing your AZ-104.